you'd see you'd see whatever it was out the corner of your eye and it was always it was always like um, a black silhouette shadow that would move really quickly. I feel so upset talking about it. I haven't done a story time in years. I know I normally review bags, but I had one of you in the comments the other day saying, I remember that ghost story that you did years ago. And I thought some stuff happened when I recorded that video in 2015. At that time, this other thing hadn't happened. So for any of you that didn't see that ghost story video, I'm gonna tell you what happened and then I'm actually gonna give you an update on the other things that, that happened to me as an adult. Back in the 90s, my parents bought this house. So there was me and my sister and then my parents had another, uh, my other sister. And the house we were in, we were, we'd outgrown it. So we, there was this house that came up on the market and um i don't i don't think this was anything to do with the ghost thing actually because no one lived in it so no one knew about it but it came up on the market and it, it was weirdly at a price that was still at the very top end of my parents budget but they were like wow that's actually that's actually affordable for where it is so what the estate agent had told us was that there were two sisters that had never got married and they lived in the house together and they bought it back whenever. One sister had died and then the other one had died a couple of years later. I don't know if they died in the house. They didn't, they didn't tell us that. But when I say the front and rear gardens were so overgrown, I'm telling you it was like the grass and the weeds were above waist height. And when my parents cleared it, which took ages because n lawn, a lawnmower was never gonna do it. It was proper, wasn't even grass by this point. It was just um, like weeds and sticks. When they cleared it, they f would find little footpaths with really made out of really old uh, kind of stones. And then they, they, I remember they found this archway, metal archway that had a rose growing around it. Oh my God, I remember them, there being a old bird nest in the rose in this archway because it was so overgrown. There was the, the bedroom of each sister and then there was some other bedrooms that they'd made up as guest bedrooms and every bed was made. It's like something weird had happened, they tidied up, they'd made the bed and then they'd left. It was the weirdest thing. And you go in their bedrooms and there'd be uh, pictures out and ornaments and all of their stuff and like the books they had been reading. The kitchen was canary yellow like canary yellow, um, like 1950s. The bathroom, but I remember it was a really vivid color and it was, it, it was just, it was totally 1950s. There was an old 1950s TV in the sitting room and an old 1950s radio, you know, with like the slidey things. Oh, I've got to say as well, this house was so, so old. I don't know how many of you know what a larder is, but a larder is a Victorian, refrigerator and it's a room so you've got a door off a kitchen and it's a room that um backs onto the outside of the house so it's got an outside wall and that room is always freezing so you can keep food in it and it worked couldn't believe it it worked like my parents didn't keep meat and fish in it and stuff like that milk but you'd it was always freezing that room <laughs> it also had a hatch so it would go from the kitchen um Back in the day, I think you'd have like a dining room and then the kitchen adjoining and there would be an open, like two little open doors so you could pass the food through. So the first kind of things that happened were really small. They were the kind of things that you could write off as I imagined that, that didn't really happen. It, they were really, really subtle things that you could explain away with, oh, maybe the wind caught the door. And it started, it started to gradually get worse the longer we were in the house. So the first thing that happened was there was this, up to the bedrooms, there was this incredibly long corridor. And one of the things that you would hear is what, someone walking up and down it. And the way they'd walk up and down it was one of two ways. Sometimes you could hear someone and they were tiptoeing. It was really, really odd. You, you could hear someone there, you could hear like slow, 
creaking on the floorboards and you could hear that sort of like um just that just that tiptoeing noise to a point where it would cut i'm not joking you you'd hear it walk up to your door and you'd open your door and there was no one there and you know when you also kind of sense as a human we have a way of sensing you know whether there's someone there or not or there's someone following me there's someone behind me you know as humans we can do that then the footsteps sometimes would be heavier and more determined and it almost it was really weird this combination of more of a tiptoe approach and more of a sort of i'm walking up here and who are you kind of thing and it would always walk up the corridor and stop by certain bedroom doors. As the years progressed, more and more weird, unexplainable stuff happened. In the sitting room, the door that led to the sitting room, it doesn't do it anymore because my parents bricked it up. <laughs> but you'd sit in there watching TV, you know, we'd sit there as a family, and the door, you'd hear, so the long corridor I was telling you about, part of it ran up the side of the wall that was the sitting room. Some nights, you know, when we were kids, we'd all sit in the sitting room and we'd be watching TV and you would hear someone walking along that side. Then the door on the sitting room, always, it just popped open. It didn't open wide, it would just pop open. You know, just like that much. Many, many times, we would try and create it. If you shut that door, it did, you could pull on it all you wanted. It did not open. I swear to God, it was the weirdest thing. Something I forgot to speak about that I mentioned in that first video, and I want to add it because it's kind of quite telling as well, I think, of probably what these things were. And do you know something? You're probably listening thinking this is mad, but to be honest, with all due respect, when you live in a place like this, suddenly you... You know there's some weird stuff. Anyway, what I was going to say, 10 o'clock every single night, we would hear the footsteps going down the corridor in the direction of the bedrooms. There was a light switch on the wall right outside the bedroom that was mine that turned out was one of these ladies. You would hear the light switch click, but it would never affect the light, so it would never turn the light on or off. But there was an audible click kind of i guess like whoever it was was would normally have gone to bed at that time of night then the point when things got worse my sister moved out of that bedroom because she couldn't take it she moved into what was the dining room okay it was that bad my, my we my parents bought us a puppy the corridor that i was telling you about the long corridor there was my bedroom at the end my sister's bedroom was in the middle my parents' bedroom was right at the end and then the corridor turned around and then you had like the kitchen, the dining room, all of that kind of thing, like the sitting room. So if I opened my bedroom door, right at the other end was my parents' room. The puppy used to sleep under my parents' bed and every night, until we got a priest in, which I'm gonna come on to, every night, at about three in the morning you'd fall asleep and everything would be cool and about three in the morning you would hear the walking up and down the corridor and do you know what the strangest thing is it's not the noise of the walking that would wake you up you would just wake up and then you would hear it and the dog would go to the as soon as it happened every blooming night the dog would come out from under my parents bed stand at the perimeter of their door and he would growl like properly growl and bark look down the corridor and then he'd yelp and he'd run back under my parents bed and he would keep doing it so i might my sister would be away everyone in the house is awake the amount of times because i had school the next day i was I, I spent years tired, so did my sister. My sister actually said to me that in the end of school, one of her teachers said, why are you always tired? And my sister said, I couldn't tell her the reason why, because she either thought I was crazy. All of this stuff had been going on, but the feel of it turned nasty. It, uh, initially it was, it was a bit creepy, a bit annoying, but it was almost like whatever it was, wasn't aware we were there. Maybe, I don't know. There was a, a visible change though. When I got to be, I would say about 15, six, 16, the feel of it became frightening. Before it wasn't frightening, it's really weird. You would imagine that if you see a ghost or you hear a ghost, 
that you'd be terrified. It, it's, it's very rarely the case. It's very weird. It's not kind of like on movies where one creeps up behind you and you scream. It's really, really weird. You, you almost sense them. You don't necessarily see them. A lot of times when we lived there, you'd see, you'd see whatever it was out the corner of your eye. And it was always, it was always like um, a black silhouette shadow that would move really quickly. You'd sense it and you'd feel it. And if you, if you saw it, it's very weird, if you saw it here, if you looked, it wasn't there, but if you saw it there and you didn't look at it and you carried on looking ahead, you could kind of view it from, uh, from your side eye. It was very, very strange. As I say, if you looked at it, it wasn't there, but I'll, I, really weird. Any of you who know what I'm talking about, any of you who have seen those shadowy things, um, because I actually googled it and they're quite common. <laughs> um, any of you who have seen those will possibly know what I'm talking about. The tiptoeing noise became more of a shuffle as though someone had slippers on and they weren't lifting their feet off the floor and it was like a shuffling noise up and down that corridor always at about three o'clock in the morning. You would wake up like clockwork at three o'clock every morning and you would sense it outside your bedroom door, but it never actually came in. Now, at the same time, my sister had moved her bedroom to the dining room. And my sister is like, she's got qualifications in science. She is a science person. She thinks the whole thing is nonsense. She is, she's not religious. She, she's a full, she's, a, that's, you know, she's a full on scientist. So for her to admit to it, she found it really difficult. This one night, I, so I'm in my room. I'm sorry, there's so much to tell about this. I hope that you don't, um, that you're not like, oh my God, this story, but it, that it was the creepiest thing. So this one particular night, I'm in my room. I've got the light on. I'm stood up out of bed for a reason that I'm gonna tell you about. I'm so tired. That thing is outside my door. I'm not scared of it. Every time I open the door, I'm like, go away, but it's not. Like by that point, we were talking to it. I'm in my room, light on, pacing, because of this thing that used to happen that I'm gonna get onto in one second. My, the sub, right, the door opened. I was like, oh my God, it's coming in. It wasn't, it was my sister. I was like, why are you awake? She's like, I cannot sleep. That she, she said, can I sleep with you? My sister's not that kind of person. The last person, she, she wouldn't want to get into bed with me, with anyone. She's very standoffish. I was like, no, what? I've got a single bed. She said, you've got to come and see what's happened in my room. I said, I'm dealing with something here. <laughs> There's something outside my, she's like, no, come and have a look in my room. She's woken up my dad at this point. We go into her room, the hatch is open. Do you remember I told you there was a hatch? The hatch is open, the lights in the sitting room were on and the cushions on the chairs, not the actual um, seat bit that you sit on that slots into the sofa, but the cushions on the chairs were on the floor. The dog in the kitchen was being really odd. So his bed was in the kitchen and he was just like circling. And my sister, there was a rocking chair sounds so contrived but just let, let me say my sister said that she she'd woken up and she could hear this noise she opened up her door the cushions are on the floor the rocking chair's going and the dog's being odd in the kitchen and the hatch is open she came to my room then to say i don't like this can i sleep in your bed i feel really bad now i said no and she slept in the bath my dad slept in her room and he said the next morning, this is when they started to admit to it. The next morning, my dad said, I'm not sleeping in that room again. Every time I fell asleep, I felt like someone's face was like that in my face and I couldn't take it. Now, the reason why I was walking around my room that night is, so this thing had got steadily and steadily more angry feeling. That's probably the best way to explain it. And, um, I used to, so I got to this phase where I felt that it didn't stop outside my door. It actually came in. And what started happening, and this was the bit where I absolutely scared myself. I get into bed and every time, you know in that point, just as you start to fall asleep, 
I would feel something sitting on the edge of my bed, really, really, like, almost trying not to disturb me, but I would feel the depression in the bed. Sometimes you could hear the springs in, in the mattress go with the weight of whatever this was. And I'd wake up and every time I did, the mattress would like spring back up, like whoever it was had got off it. And it happened, not every night, but it happened frequently. I might have imagined it once. Some of you might go, well, you dreamt it, but I didn't dream it for years. There is no way. What then started to happen is one night I thought, right, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of, I'm gonna wake up a bit, obviously, because this thing's there. I wanna know what happens when it sits down. What's it, like, what do you wanna do? Get into bed with me. One night, the, whatever it was, had sat fully, and I felt, so I'm facing the wall, I felt ice cold down my, I'm on my side, I felt ice cold down my back and I felt a duvet really slowly lifting. I have never moved so fast. I jumped out, I've actually got chills thinking about that. I got out of that bed, I legged it to my parents' room and I told them what had happened. There was nowhere for me to sleep apart from the bath and I kind of wasn't really up for that. But from that point onwards, I never slept properly. My parents decided to get a priest in and my, my dad in particular was like, I feel that whatever this is, is, is not nice. It's turned, it, it's turned quite horrible. Um, so my parents got in this priest and it didn't take one go. So what the priest did is he, he like went from room to room with holy water. And I can't lie, I was stood behind him and I was like, this is not gonna work. He went into each room with holy water and read out passages from the Bible, every room, corridor, etc. The first night, it all just continued to happen, to be honest. It, I don't remember it doing too much. But he came back a second time and then eventually a third because it wasn't really doing it and eventually it i don't know how never got rid of it but it soothed it 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 was really weird but um my parents still live there now for a reason i'm going to come on to which is also creepy but it took the aggression out of it whatever that aggressive vibe was went and there was still something there but it was chill, I guess you'd say. Now, the reason why my parents are still there, and a lot of you asked me this question when I did the video the first time, when all this started happening, my parents, we tried to move out of that house so many times. And every single time we would try to move, my parents would put in like an offer on a house and it would go all the way through and they'd get gazumped or something would happen and they couldn't get it. And to this day, my dad still talks about it. My mum's like, your dad does my head in with all of the times that he was saying we should have moved there. And she was like, he can't remember that it, ne it, it never happened. That's the kind of backstory. I moved out of the house and weird stuff continued to happen, but I didn't feel that it was connected to that house. I didn't feel that I'd taken any of that with me. I felt at that point, no, it sounds nuts, but I felt at that point that I could just see it now. I kind of feel, I actually kind of in a way feel a bit embarrassed talking about this because if you don't believe in it, it probably sounds like I've lost my mind, but just, you know, you kind of are more connected to it and you see stuff a lot more, in my experience anyway. One, many things have happened over the years that have, since then, that have been really unexplained. And um, I could sit here and do a whole video on all of it. But the one big thing that I thought I would tell you about was um, to do with my grandparents, actually. And this is why I didn't talk about this in that last video, because um, my grandmother sadly died a couple of years ago now, and that hadn't happened at the time. So this was the thing. Back in 2008, my... Granddad had died in 2004 and it got to 2008 and my 
Gran didn't really want to sell the house, but she was at a point where she really needed kind of help in the everyday. And so she she didn't want to, but she ended up going into like a nursing home. So the house that she was in, I, I have always been really close to my grandparents. I actually call them mum and dad. So when the house was sold, I was personally, I felt really upset because that felt like a family home. It was a place that I had known since I was born and had so many happy memories in it and it was really sad to see it go, but I knew she needed the money in order to pay for, to go into a home. So that the, the house got sold and I, st I started getting these really vivid dreams and it was my granddad and it, it felt different to a dream. It felt like I'd be in a dream and then it would, it would, the tone of the dream would change and it felt not like a dream, I can't describe it. And it was my granddad and he was in a sense of kind of urgency and quite stressed and he kept um not not verbally telling me but kind of I, I kind of knew what he was saying without speaking um he kept urging me to go over to the house and he showed me the garden and the garden was really dark in what he'd show me and he'd show me in this flower bed this all he would show was a color in the darkness this colour of like a pinky, really bright pinky purpley colour and then he would show me by their bedroom a porthole like on a boat and the first time I dreamt it I woke up and I felt really really spooked and I told David I said this is really odd and but I didn't do anything about it and the dream kept happening it kept happening then this is nuts then uh, where I used to work I would on a couple of occasions go out to get lunch and I would see the back of him in this jacket that he always used to wear and I'd smell his cologne and I'd always see just the back of him going round a corner, like turning a corner and I, of course every time you're going to run and, and see and I'd turn the corner and he was never there. This was in Guildford so I always used to work in Guildford and that was where I always used to see it. But the dream kept happening and the closer it was getting to completion on the house the more stressed the dream was getting and it got to a point where i said to david would you come with me i just feel like this dream's gonna go away if i go over there and i'm getting i'm he's he's showing me this color in the garden in the portal and something about a shovel okay so i go over there with david it's may but it's the, I've gone over after work, it's raining and it's dark. And that was weird because in the dream, he kept showing me what was in this flower bed and it was in darkness. Now I believed that what was in the flower bed was, I don't know, something he buried or something. That was the vibe I was getting. We go into the house, I'm looking for this blooming porthole near the bedroom, couldn't see anything. I've got chills up my back and David, who doesn't believe in this, he didn't grow up in a haunted house, so he's just like, okay, this is weird. He said, I feel like I'm being watched so badly and I don't like it in here. And I was like, you stay close because I don't want to be on my own. Anyway, I go out to the garden. In the rain, I go up to the exact spot in the flower bed and growing in between weeds, because no one's been tending to the garden, growing in weeds was one flower the exact colour that I kept seeing and it was a camellia flower. No, it was a, what is it called? Clematis flower. And I, again, I felt this chill up me. It was almost like, yes, that's it, dig it up. And I said out loud, why are we digging up a flower? And also, I don't know whether any of you know anything about clematis. My granddad was obsessed with gardening. If you dig up an established clematis, they, they normally die because they've got like the, the way the roots work on them they and they've got they climb up things so there's like vines everywhere and the thing is I got the message to take a shovel but I didn't get a message to take a bucket or a pot or something so David went and got a bin bag from the kitchen we're digging this thing up in the rain then I still had this feeling that there was someone with me saying you've got to get this porthole I walked up to where their bedroom was there's just imagine the carpets have been taken up by this point. The sofas are all gone. It's dark. There's no electricity there. There's boxes piled up with papers from the loft and all of this kind of thing. And it's like a shell of a house. And by their bedroom door, piled up 
in a box with my granddad's old CVs was what looked like a porthole. Uh, by this point, now Dave, I'd said to David all this, something this colour in the garden and a porthole. When David saw it, he was like, I can't, I cannot take this. This is so weird. To this day, he always talks about it. Anyway, I got the porthole and it actually wasn't, but it looked like one. And it turned out it was the base of his and my grand's wedding cake. And it looked like a porthole and it was gold. And inside of it, was a painting that his mother had painted of the church they got married in and she used the bottom of their cake thing as a frame. This thing was covered in spiderwebs and I said out loud, I don't want to take that, I'm going to get my mum to take that because it's covered in spiderwebs but I got the message, I get it. So anyway, I put it on their bed, I phoned my mum, I was like, mm, this porthole thing and my mum knew what it was. She was like, oh yeah, I know, I actually know what that is. So anyway, we leave the house, we have to go past home base on the way home to get soil in a pot for this plant. Do you know, you won't believe it, but that plant lived. I was expecting for it to die, that plant lived and the dreams stopped. Now the fast forward years, fast forward, you know I told you my gran was in a nursing home. My gran passed away in 2017. So in a, in a weird way, when she died, it was quite relieving because she'd been sick for a long time and she wasn't having a good time and she didn't really want to be in this home at that point. And she said to me, I, I went to Paris for my anniversary with David and she said to me before I left, she said, I'm ready to go. Before that, she'd always said to me, I'm scared about dying, I don't want to die. But at that point she said, I'm ready to go. And then I got back from Paris and she'd gone into like a coma and she never woke up from it. But Weirdly, I'd go and talk to her and I'd say to her, if you can hear me, she'd like squeeze my hand. So she could hear, but she just couldn't wake up out of it and she eventually died. So I, I felt like I'd already said my goodbye. And when she passed over, when she died, I grieved for her for so many years, thinking that she was going to go anyway, that when she actually did, it was kind of like, I'm so pleased for her that, that, that that's done now. When I'm about to tell you this next bit, it wasn't because I was grieving and she was on my mind and I imagined it and it actually went on for probably about a year. I used to very often, I'd be busy, I'd be working, whatever, and I would smell her perfume just waft past. And my gran always wore Yves Saint Laurent opium. And in fact, when she was dying, my gran's really, really bougie. <laughs> When she was dying, uh, when I was in Paris, my family told me this, before she kind of like went to this coma, she was in her bed, and by this point she was feeling rough, and she used to say to my family, can you just spray some of that opium on me just to like uplift? Now here's the weird thing, about a week after she died, I um, went into the garden to sort out the plants. Might even have been sooner than that, because I like, I sort out the plants quite a lot. And this clematis that was in this pot that I've had for nearly 10 years at this point, there was nothing left of it. There was not anyone who knows what a clematis is. They have these like, they look like that they climb up things and the sticks look like they're dead, but they're not. And even if they have died, even if the stick branch has died, they don't rot. You normally have to cut them off because it's, it just goes like a dry bark. So if a, if a clematis dies, you're gonna see what's left of it. Like there's like a quite, a quite a big skeleton left of it. I go into the garden and in that pot is the bamboo that it was climbing up and there was not a piece left of it. Not a twig. It was like there had been nothing in that pot the whole time and overflowing in that pot was this flower called Forget Me Not. That flower, I've seen it at the garden center but I've never actually bought it and I don't know how it got into that pot because I've never bought it. And the fact that it was that flower, and it wasn't a few, the, hot, the pot was pretty big. The entire pot was full of it. I actually emptied the pot onto the floor and I was urgently looking for the roots of this clematis because I thought maybe I can save it. There was nothing, there was not, there was nothing in the pot that resembled a root. It's like that plant had never been there. And I've got to tell you again, for any of you who know what that plant is, you'll know what I mean, that even when they die, they're all their twiggy bits are left. 
the fact that it happened a few days after my gran died, that was when I noticed it. I called David out into the garden because of course 10 years before David's helped me dig this thing up and I showed him and he he was gobsmacked and he actually brought it up with me the other day he said do you remember that time when you know that that plant that we dug up wasn't there and it was all full of forget-me-nots and I feel like I don't know maybe that was maybe that was my granddad's connection to down here and then he was like okay your grand's with me now, I'm gonna move on. I don't, you don't need that plant. And I, f I felt really upset. I was really, really tearful as I was looking for the roots because I thought I've killed it, I've killed it. And I just felt, I felt him weirdly, suddenly, I felt him in my ear going, go and buy another one. And I went out that day, I feel really upset talking about it. And I went out that day and I bought one and I've still got it now and just, <laughs> I find it actually, I feel so upset talking about it, I find it actually really comforting um, because I really do think there is something now after all of this and it's only because of everything that I've witnessed and growing up in that house and just unexplained things witnessed by other people. I know this video is really long and I've got so many other things that have happened in the last sort of 10 15 years that i could tell you just really weird things but that would take forever but i hope you've enjoyed this um let me know if you've experienced any of this and whether i don't know um just what you think thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video